so i literally cannot believe that i'm making this video public but i think the time has come everyone needs to hear the actual truth the tea the actual tea i was thinking like what was the point of me posting this video it made me realize that the whole point of you hearing the story would be that i would like you to not stay as naive as i were and that you should know that there are situations in life when you expect them <laughs> the least yeah i just really hope that you will learn from my mistakes and that you will stay the smart one in the situation so actually it's really hard for me to keep the story short but also entertaining so i will put some of the visual clips to keep you entertained throughout the whole video because it's gonna probably take a long time so yeah i hope you will enjoy the video and let's get started let's get started everything started in 2000 well why am i thinking as if it was a long time ago it was it literally happened like a few months ago but anyways so it was in 2020 in the summer around july august so me and my friend we live we're studying in copenhagen and we were looking for a place to live together because you know oh my god so much fun it's cheaper you know to rent something together basically we need to move out asap to a new place we are hunting for apartments we're looking on facebook groups on you know web pages that offer apartments and anya my friend she stops upon this post on facebook and is this apartment literally in the nicest place like literally center of copenhagen it was um if you're from denmark it was Ostbro. Ostebro, Ostebro, I don't know how to say this, but Ostebro, and uh, and we looked at, lo at the location and it was super nice, like the center, everything would be super close to us, you know, 10 minutes to work, 10 minutes to university, so we're like, oh my god, let's text this woman, we get in contact with this woman, she's super nice, she's our age, like she's around our age, studying, you know, yeah, we basically, we go look at the apartment, and we can tell, you know, the apartment is it's nice it's I, we know that it would look nice if we decorated it but it wasn't like super you know new freshly renovated place the kitchen was super small like there was no oven and the problem was that the apartment had like it was two rooms one room you know like a living room connected to the kitchen and then one room like a bedroom and so the problem for me and anya was like which room is gonna be whose you know who's gonna take the bedroom and who's gonna be in the kitchen basically when we were thinking if we should go if we should take this apartment it was really hard to decide because the place was super nice everything was included in the price but it was still really expensive for us as for students so each person needed to pay 5400 danish crowns so in euros each person had to pay basically um 800 euros which is insane so imagine two people paying 800 crowns each so it's thousand and 600 euros for i don't know it, apartment had probably like 30 meters square and basically we were paying money for the area not for the apartment and the contract says that she is subleasing it we are settling in you know everything is super nice we're happy but then like the more we were living there the more we were like realizing that there was something up like we were constantly like seeing signs that there was something wrong not like that there was something wrong with the apartment that but we were really concerned about the price because Whoever came to the apartment and heard how much we were paying, they were like, oh, that's kind of expensive, you know? But okay, like you live in Ostrobro, maybe it's fine. And, you know, throughout the time, we were noticing like that the house we were living in, it only had students. Like everyone who was living there were super young. And we're like, why is it like that? Like, why are there so many young people in this place? And, you know, throughout the time, um, I was working in this cafe. So I had a friend who was working with me there and he asked me, he was like like where do you live and i tell him the area and basically we found out that 
he was spending all of his time in that house because his friends were also living there and then he asked me like so how much do you pay and this is where i was like there is something wrong there is something wrong it's sketchy and i tell him how much i pay and he's like are you kidding me and i'm like no i'm not like what he's like you're paying 5400 danish crowns each and i'm like yeah and he's like my friend is paying 3,500 crowns approximately and he's living with his girlfriend so that means that they're paying together 6,700, 7,000 crowns and I'm like, hmm, that is interesting that is very interesting and I think the apartment of his friend was even bigger like it had two rooms so this is where I'm like, there is something wrong. But like, I didn't really, you know, I was always reminding myself that I'm in Copenhagen and that is okay to pay this kind of money. So the worst time in our lives comes. Like two days before going to work, I was like, I told Anya, I was like, girl, I feel like I'm gonna get fired. Like. I had this feeling and she was like no you've been working there for over a year and i was like but i just have this feeling like i had this gutty feeling she's like no no like chill girl it's not gonna happen <sighs> and then after two days i come to work and i get fired and you know as soon as i got fired the only thing that i was thinking about was like how am i gonna be able to pay off the rent because if you stop working that means you're gonna stop getting your financial support not that immediately but like i was just exaggerating everything in my mind so i get i get fired and i text anya i'm like anya i just got fired and i'm not even joking like i'm not joking she texts me she goes daniela like you won't believe me but i also just got fired and keep in mind, we are working in totally different places. I'm working in, in the cafe and she's working in hotel. Like She got fired at the same time as I did. Like, what a coincidence. And so, you know, I'm crying. I'm like, what am I going to do? We're like laughing because it's insane, like to understand the fact that we got fired at the same time. But like, we're laughing, but also crying because we just like, we don't know what's going to happen next. Oh boy. And something's going to happen next. Actually knowing how hard it is to find a job in Pablo. How hard it is to find a job in Copenhagen, you know, and knowing that it's Corona times. So we were like scared to risk it. And at first we were like, okay, you know what? Let's go look for our like other job. You know, we were printing out CVs. We were literally, we were going and giving out our CVs to like every single cafe that was like nearby. And like after a week, you know, giving out CVs and knowing that our study is going to be online eventually, we decided to go back home. I'm going to go to Lithuania and she's going to go to her home country. So when we decided that, we we're like, okay, so now we need to tell the woman who rented out the place. Let's call her Felicia. Felicia. We need to tell Felicia that we are no longer available to rent this place because no job, no finances, we're not going to be able to survive. The thing that we were like worrying about was that our contract said that we needed to tell Felicia in advance, like three months in advance, uh, before we wanted to move out but like we wanted to move out basically in like two weeks we called felicia you know on camera being really nice like you know saying that we love this place we call her and we say you know we can no longer stay in this place and this is happening in the mid of october so like october 15th let's say and she says okay so our contract stated that you needed to tell me three months in advance, you know, before I found someone new. And she goes, so basically, I'm going to be nice to you and I'm going to give you two months. You know, basically, if I will not find anyone in two months, you will have to pay the rent 
no matter where you're gonna be like back home like you're gonna be responsible for the rent which like makes sense because this is what our contract was stating and after she said that we're like but still like we're not gonna be able to pay off our rent because two months being us outside of Denmark we're not gonna get the money anyways so we're like oh my god like we're like what are we gonna do now and then after talking to Felicia we were like okay we're gonna try to find new tenants for this apartment in two weeks and if we find the tenants you know everything is fine and we get our deposit back oh yeah i didn't mention the most important part of this video when we were moving into the apartment we needed to pay deposit of two months rent so that means that we gave her together twenty thousand something crowns for the deposit the thing that was always in our minds was like god please like don't let us lose this money because if like we had no income like we we're like we needed this money it's our parents money if she would take the money you know we would not be able to give the money back to our parents and knowing the whole situation with corona like it was just really uh frustrating she agrees that you know we can look for people and if we find someone in two weeks we move out we get our money back everyone is happy she has new tenants we're we getting our deposit back and everyone is happy and whatever so imagine imagine these two weeks we needed to take the pictures of the apartment post post it on the facebook group invite people over for them to be able to look you know around the apartment and at the same time we needed to you know study and we needed to pack our stuff so imagine these two weeks it's not that much time to do everything and this is where my favorite part comes mm. okay so we make a post on facebook and we immediately get like a ton of messages like people are like messaging they want to get like they want to look around this apartment you know we get happy because oh maybe there's a chance for us to find someone really quickly because there's so many people that are interested in this apartment like we're trying our best to find people asap because like you know it's we, we want the money back we want the money back <sighs> so one day and get ready for this because this is insane so one day we were sitting, we we're doing our project for school, whatever. And we we're like waiting for one couple that has to come in like one hour. And we hear a knock into our door. I'm like, I literally like wanna not cry, but it like, I'm, I'm getting really like upset. We hear a knock into a door. I look into the door, like into the, like my eyes are literally watering. I look, you know, through the, <laughs> what's like what is it called the eye thing in the door and i see this man like from the age 30 to 40 years old and i'm like anya there's a guy standing and he looks like a police officer like there's something you know there's something that was really like should i open this door because the guy looked really professional he had the sign on his um jacket and i was like anya there's not like there's this guy so she's like, okay, open the door. I open the door. <laughs> and this guy's like, where is Felicia? And I'm like, Felicia doesn't live here. We are renting this place from her. And he goes, oh dear God. She is doing it again, two times in a row. She is literally going to the court. And me and Anya, like, meanwhile, we're waiting for people to come and look at the apartment. We're like, I'm sorry, sir, but what is happening? He goes, she is subleasing the apartment illegally. And we're like, oh, like we, at this moment, our minds are like shattered. Like we are so lost. And he's like, may I come in? And I'm like, and I trusted this guy immediately because the way he was speaking and the way he was dressed like it looked like he was like he wasn't fake you know he showed he even showed us like the document the proof that he is like from this and this organization so <laughs> so we invite him over and he's like speaking in danish to these people on the phone he's like doo -doo 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 -doo, like saying some like serious stuff and me and anya we're like just we look at each other and we're like what the actual hell 
he goes like he was like how much you're paying we tell him how much we're paying and he said that we're supposed to pay like around five thousand six thousand together so like imagine paying that like we would save so much money paying like let's say six thousand together instead of ten thousand four hundred and we're like we're not it was hard to believe the guy because felicia was super nice like she was super sweet like she was our age girl super sweet we're not understanding what is happening because is he lying is she lying like we don't know who to believe in and this is where like you know my lesson was like don't stay naive even if the person is super nice of course she's gonna be super nice when we're paying ten thousand four hundred like of course she's gonna be nice like no shit like you know and then he goes can i see your contract so we show him the contract he's like can i take this as a proof and we're like yeah whatever like we cannot be on felicia's side when a person who's of course the right one here and knows the whole house is basically like the organization he works for he said that this house is a student house a student housing and that like the money we were paying she was scamming us she was getting all this profit for herself and like we, i do i couldn't understand this you know because like everything just connected at once and i was like whoa you know my friend that from the cafe was right everyone was right so at this moment we're like texting every single like couple that was supposed to come for the to like to look for the apartment we're like it's canceled it's canceled you know we're deleting the post from the facebook because it's basically legal you know we sign a paper stating that felicia didn't live here so he leaves and me and anya like we are like we're speechless like i even now want to cry because this moment we were like everything was just too much like losing our jobs you know realizing that all of this time when we were like looking for people for this apartment that it was a waste like it was all waste because she scammed us now our plan was to think how are we gonna get our money back the twenty thousand danish crowns how are we gonna get the money back we call Felicia, we basically tell her that we know that we're paying too much, but we're not telling her that the guy came, we're not telling her anything, we're just saying that we know that we're paying too much. And of course she thinks that we're stupid because we have no proof, like, where do you know, that? like, where does it come from? And she, of course, she starts, you know, defending herself, she's like, no, this is normal price, like, you know, this is the normal price of the apartment you would get in Osterbro which is true but she was doing it illegally like this is the place that was worth of like three thousand crowns yeah but anya was like screaming at her and saying like i i need my money back like all this money is not even mine it's my parents which is true like i was also really scared but i was just my mind didn't function like how is this nice girl was able to scam us you know the time passes and we're like no we cannot we can no longer pretend that we're still looking for people so we called the guy because he gave us the number he says just tell her the truth like just tell her the truth and uh, try your best to get the money back so a week passes and we're, we need to make this call and to tell her that we know everything and that we know that she's scammed us so imagine we're like oh my god like the moment of truth has come and we basically tell her that you know we know we're paying too much you know this guy came and she just goes she got so scared i've never seen anyone being so stressed and she was like oh i have my exams now and she was like really worrying which again i was the one who was nice and i was like oh like i understand her you know she has her exams now it's so but like you know i was the stupid one and she told us to just tell the guy that we didn't understand what he meant and that we were the wrong ones and that actually that felicia was living with us but she was in the university like are you kidding me we're like can you imagine three people living in this apartment like no 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 she's like well just tell the guy that you didn't understand him that you didn't speak danish and that you just got confused and we're like no like we're just being straightforward we're like no and we told her that we signed the papers proving that she didn't live there, everything. We told her the truth. What happened next was that she was stressed as... And our contract 
which basically wasn't even a contract anymore. It was just a piece of paper that didn't mean anything. I was stating that after we give her the keys back, after seven days, she will return our money back, the deposit, the 20,000k. We talked to her and we're like, you know, we need to, we're going back home, we're not looking for people, we need our money back. The, f the thing is that she still doesn't understand that it's RIP for her, you know, she doesn't understand that she's gone into a really serious situation where literally she can end up in the court. So after, like the day has like the day when we need to move out is coming, you know, we're packing our luggages, you know, there's a flight waiting for us. And we decided that she's gonna come into the apartment and we're gonna give her the keys back. First she texted us, she's like so before coming into the apartment on that day, she messaged us saying, Can we go and meet her in the cafe? And we're like, this woman is scared to come into the apartment probably because she thinks that we're standing there with this guy in police, I don't know. But we're not that like, we're just like, we have no time for that. And we're like, actually we have 20 bags with us and we cannot take them together with us. So she comes and she's so, it's like, I've never seen anyone being so stressed out. She was like, so, it looked like she was sweating. Like she was like, you know, nervous laughing. It's like she did, did not feel comfortable, which I totally get like I would also be in the same situation as she was. She we give her the keys back and we're like, okay, so you know, um, we're gonna wait for the money, you know, back home, which was the stupidest thing ever. Like we should have asked for the money right away after we gave her the keys out because we're going to another country. Like she she literally can take the money. The twenty thousand gate. <laughs> So she's like, yeah, guys, like, I'm gonna give you the money, you know, like, within seven days. And she's being still really nice and, like, you know, promising us things. So now we're leaving to our home countries. We're back there and we're texting her, like, hey, you know, we are still waiting for the money. She's like, yeah, yeah, like, whatever, I'm gonna give you it. Like, it so it's been seven days and we text her and we're like, girl, where is our money? And she's like, girls, I'm having exam, you know, until this whole situation is not gonna sol be solved, I'm not gonna give you the money. And we're like, what the f So then we're like, you know, I have everyone behind me, like, we are texting her these messages, like, proving her that she needs to give it back now, you know? So after a long, you know, fighting for this money, what this woman does, what this woman does, she blocks us everywhere. Which was, of course, something we should have expected, but we were just naive and stupid. So <laughs> she blocks us on WhatsApp, Facebook, everything. She even made her Instagram private. I was like, girl, that's that's a whole other level. So yeah, and we lost our 20k. And we emailed every single company. Like we emailed the organization that the guy was from because he said that we could always contact him, talk, contact him. But like we were literally out of like energy and we were so weak. And he did. He said like I can't even promise you this because we'll still need. It. And uh, it was just the most crazy time of our lives because we were students. We didn't make any money. We were, you know, especially I stayed naive, you know. Everything in this moment in my life was going down and uh, even now I'm like sad that, you know, this money was not even our money, like it was our parents. After this, I'm not going to trust anyone, like I literally cannot trust anyone, like it's super, like super hard. So yeah, that's basically my story time, how I lost my job, lost the apartment, lost 20,000 and lost the trust in people. So I really hope that you will be aware of these situations, especially when you're young, have no experience. My advice is just don't stay naive, be careful, read, you know, have everything on the paper, like have everything on the paper. You need to have written proof, everything. So, but thank you for watching and I hope you found it helpful and that, yeah, you found it interesting. And I'll see you next week. Bye.